What's happening guys? Sam from Warpgate Studios here. Hope you're doing well. Today I thought I would do a little video, because um, it's been a while, uh, on dry brush palettes and what they are, what they add to dry brushing and why they're a hell of a lot better than this, a bit of uh, paper towel. So uh, the theory behind this, and, and it's been fantastic working with this and trying to kind of uh, see where the technology is going in the industry is the fact that the dry brush palette itself it isn't anything complicated. It's a bit of MDF um, and it's about sort of three, four mil thick MDF, maybe even five mil thick. And it's got etched texture on it. Um, and basically what the, the premise of this is and the, the technology behind it is, when you're dry brushing, it's all about moisture. And the old school way was loading up your brush with paint and getting it on those bristles and then rubbing it off onto some paper and then literally just double checking. There's a little bit of paint left on there and then dry brushing it onto a, a product basically. And, and then you would get a dry brush effect. Well, the only issue with it doing that that, that way is, and, and the guys that have, have spent a lot of time on the technology side, uh, when, the, when you do that, it becomes very, very grainy. And it looks, you can kind of spot it where it is. And it's, you know, sometimes a little bit textured as well and all of that side of things. So the, the, the theory behind it is, and it, it does work because I've been, I've been using it quite extensively recently, is the fact that instead of using a bit of paper towel, you find yourself a texture palette like this. You get um, some paint on your um, on, on your your palette, uh, your your wet palette or whatever you're using, um, or you know just straight from the the pot, and then you work it on here on the on the dry brush palette, and you get most of that paint off. Now the difference between this is the fact you're not losing the moisture. The moisture is lost and absorbed by the paper towel. On here it isn't. You're literally just working off some of that onto the texture that's on the on the on the palette, and then you can work out what's left on there to dry brush with, and it actually gives a better, more consistent, less grainy dry brush effect. So this is why these things are important, and you can kind of tell. I've this is my own one for the studio that we've we've designed, um, but there are other ones that have got more deeper grains on and all those sorts of things. So um, they're very very much worthwhile. But I've been asked probably six, seven, eight times recently what these are and what how they're used. And as I said, you get your paint, work the paint onto the dry brush uh, palette, and get most of that off and then you've still got a, a ton of moisture still left in there but you've worked most of the paint off you can then test it on you know yourself i always do just out of habit test it on on a part of you know on a, on a knuckle or something like that to make sure there's still paint on there and and it's to the right level and you can work it on these and then you know get them on there so i'm going to do it on this this uh this ultramarine blue um uh, model here just to kind of show you what what it's uh, what it is and i've got a dry a walkgate studios dry palette, dry brush palette that i've been using so you can kind of see how i use it already and all i'm really doing is loading up the um the the palette with a color and then dry brushing it with that so i'm actually going to use a, a color called calgar blue which is a lighter blue that's going to go nicely on on the top of this this uh this McCrag blue and I'm literally gonna put you can do this as well just put a little bit on the, the palette and then you're gonna coat your brush I've probably got a bit too big a brush for this uh, for this small little model but you're gonna work it off on these textures on the, the texture uh, palette until you've got it to a consistency where you're happy man I might have done that a little bit too much there um, to a decent consistency so that you're going to be able to get a little bit on there see there's a little bit left on there and then i'm going to work it on this model and and give it a good dry brush and the good thing about this is as i said the moisture is still kept in there you're not soaking up all of the moisture out of the paint and it helps 
uh, keep it a little bit more uniform, less gritty and grainy on the model, and you end up with a really, really nice um, uh, sort of finish on it. I'm just gonna add a little bit of white, uh, bulb titanium white just to this. This is just a demo, you don't need to follow this. I'm just kind of demonstrating layering up with the uh, dry brushing as well in this. And we've got a lighter blue there just to finish this off. Let's try and work that off most of this brush. So we've got a tiny little bit left. Yeah, there we go. And I'm just gonna pick out some of the edges. And as I said, it just, it leaves it with a less grainy effect on the model, which for me is a hell of a lot better than the old school technique sort of thing. So um, there you go. So you can kind of see nicely dry brushed bit of uh, of scenery using a dry brush. Um, the, the thing, you know, the, the Artist Opus brushes, the ones that I'm using at the moment, I've got some great videos on it as well. And uh, yeah, so it's a, a fantastic little tool and something you can make yourself as well. Or, you, you know, if you're interested, shoot me a DM because we've got them um, for sale um, here in the US and I can mail them back to the UK and elsewhere as well. So yeah, uh, pretty, pretty funky little tool and will help dramatically with your dry brushing. So thanks for watching. Cheers, bye.